Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. This is my American Electric Model 327 1000 Watt Metal Halide Street Light. I got this about two weeks ago now, and I'm finally getting around to doing a video of it, as I finally completed most of it. There's still a few pieces that I need to do, but it's at least to the point where I can make a video. So this street light is definitely one that I've wanted for a long time, and it's really kind of cool, not too common, but it's it's more so just a really nice looking light, and it's quite large. So this is a light that I bought off of eBay, of course, and I was told by the seller that it came from a college in Mississippi. And looking on Google Maps here, I was actually able to find them. Now, whether this is going to turn out great on the video, here they are. You can see there's a 327 and all the way down to the college. And I think I might have found my exact one. And here it is. There's no way for me to be completely certain, but I feel like this 327 is this one. So that's cool to know where finally one of my fixtures came from. So now that we've seen that, we're going to take a closer look at the light. All right, here it is. This is a light that looks like basically like the Model 25. It's just a larger version of it. And we'll start by looking at the top. So on the top, you'll see that there's a spot where you can level the fixture. And it actually says level on it, which is something that Modern American electric lights don't do. They'll just have a little cross up there, and you're just kind of supposed to know that it's for leveling. And then here, you'll see the big heat sink where the ballast is under there, and the two screws that I really don't know what purpose they serve, but they're in there. And then here is the photocell socket, which is actually a Thomas and Butts. This is a Thomas and Butts light, technically, but. Um, it still is referred to, I guess, as American Electric, because it's really kind of the same thing. So there's the inside. And now, I'll get to uh, looking at the bottom here. So again, you'll see here's the spring latch, which is only on some of these older lights. And it's too bad they didn't keep that, because I think it's way better than the modern hinges they use. There's my homemade NEMA label the place where you put a bubble level, and then the little cheap latch. I'm going to turn this over and let's take a look at the door specifically. So I've got the fixture on its side, and you'll see this latch here. All you do is you pull this out, and the light will open up, but it's not going to do it because it's laying on its back right now. But yeah, I'm going to open this off camera, and then we'll take a closer look. Alright, now we got this open here. We're going to take a look at the door and this spring latch. Now to open this light, you have these two little spring taps that you'll see. There's one, focus, and then there's the other one. You just push those out to the side, and that will allow you to re release the door. But I'm not going to do that here. So then, as we move in, you'll see these four little parts, these little compartments that have drip holes in them. And this is actually a design I think is really cool, because this slip fitter is open. But what this does is this collects water, drain water, and it drips out instead of letting it get into the fixture. So that's really kind of cool. I haven't seen that in other fixtures. So it's really just kind of like a trap for water. Then as you go in, you'll see where the bubble level would be. And then the little piece here that secures in the refractor. And then up here is the same as any other American electric light except it's just bigger. And this is a little bit different than most. You have two wing nuts that you have to undo, and then this will slide back in, and you can take out your last. So I'll do that here. So basically what you just do is you unscrew these. But I'm not going to take out the glass on camera because that's uh, going to be a little dangerous. So I'm going to do that off camera, and we can look at the glass. So here I got the glass taken out. And it's pretty big glass. It's just slightly bigger than the M400 glass. And it's pretty deep, too. So if you look at the side of this glass, it's really nice. It's the same footprint as the Westinghouse OV50, but this is just a different design, and I actually really like this. 
it's uh, really simple. There's not really a whole much uh, prismatic anything going on here. It's much, mostly just straight lines. And actually, the outside of this glass is pretty much completely smooth. And I really like that. Although this does have some issues with it, and I'll get to that in a moment. But just look at that. How that looks. That just looks so cool. It's just only those vertical lines and no horizontal lines on that at all. It's just really neat. Now let's talk about uh, the embossing. So on the rim here it says American Electric, blah blah blah. And on the outside side it says Hall of Fame, blah blah blah. And now if I turn this over, you'll see one more bit of embossing, which is right here. There's a three, and that's it. Now here's the issue with this lens. It's not a very qu good quality lens, and they're probably using the same mold for a while. And this glass has some sort of crackling. I don't know the pers uh, specific term for it, but you'll see it here, and that's just the sign of being cheap. It doesn't necessarily affect the glass at all in performance or anything like that. It's not really uh, broken. That's just how it looks. It's just kind of a little cloudy and the glass just isn't that nice compared to the lens that came off of a Model 25 that I have. Well, I don't have the fixture, but I have the glass and it's a really nice lens compared to this. But see all that? Just not too much detail or any too much quality, just something to get the job done, I suppose. Now, let's move into where the, all the fun stuff is. So your slip fitter here is just your standard four bolt slip fitter. You can flip those over and make a, put a inch and a quarter mass drum in here. I don't know why you'd want to do that. And then the terminal block. And yes, I know this is just a rat's nest of wires, but I literally just wired it up. So it's, it's, it's just like that for now. The capacitor, this is a brand new capacitor and a brand new ballast. This Magnatec ballast. I got this brand new. And these are some handmade brackets that were made for this. Not by me, but they're very nice. I'm just needing a couple uh, bolts to hold this all together. As you'll see, it's kind of haphazardly in there, but it's not going to come out, and it works. So there's the multi-tap ballast and the absolute mess of wires. And then we move up here to where the socket is. You'll see the different... Uh, options for the focus. There's where the it uh, connects. And then here's where the bulb is. This is a GE bulb. You'll be able to see just barely the etch. I really want to get a mercury bulb for this. And then up here you'll see where the latch connects for the door. And then the spring that holds the reflector in. And then to ref take the reflector out you just push this spring in and it will release the refractor. So that's a basic look at this. You'll see there's a gasket in there, and that uh, socket is really set back way in there. But it looks good. Oh, here's something kind of interesting. Uh, I don't know why there's three rivet heads in there. That's just like a mistake on their part. And then here's the old label that's pretty much all worn off. Too bad, but that's how that is. Now on the other side here, you'll see the old labels. Again, they're completely worn off because this, this fixture went through. Uh, some abuse, people didn't really care, but there you can just barely make out what that says in some spots. And then over here, that's the Thomas and Betts tag. There's your uh, you could have a look. Now here's the box for the ballast that I got. Magnetech. The information. Pause that if you want to read it. Uh, the instructions. And then actually I have the old capacitor for the light. Here's the little capacitor that came with this light. And just the ballast. Now I said I made my homemade NEMA labels for this. Here's some of my uh, attempts. So this is my first attempt. It went real bad. This is just ugly. Here's my second attempt. And it looks quite good. And then the third attempt, which is the one that's on there right now, is just slightly different. 
So that's almost everything. Yeah, we can see the inside of the Mima label. And now I was able to figure out the six years primate in the year 2000. And the way I was able to tell it is these date codes that they put on here. And they're just everywhere. You'll see a bunch of dots that form a circle. Like that one says 91, maybe. 96. There's a bunch that are... I can't read, but that's 86. Something else. Uh, but yeah. There's a... Some... I can't really tell, but these are probably all day codes. There's an OO. It's just kind of weird. But that's everything on the inside. So now I'm going to go ahead and get this thing all put together so we can fire it up. Oh, here's just one more look at that homemade Nima label. All right, now the fixture is put back together. And I'm just going to put the photo cell back in. <laughs> I think we're ready to fire it up. Three, two. This is definitely very loud. Probably my second loudest fixture. Only second to my Lime Materials Nema head. Actually, turn up. And of course, this light was taken down because of an LED replacement. And the LED fixtures that went up were, uh, I think, Hall of Fame branded post tops. So, while they went LEDs, I definitely think those post tops were a good choice. Because I think they would definitely choose the, um, the uh, more aesthetically pleasing fixtures that go well with the old-timey look. Now you hear this thing making some popping sounds. I've been told that's normal. So I'm just, I'm just gonna go with it. Oh wow, it just got dramatically brighter. Okay, I feel like it's just getting very bright all of a sudden. And you can hear that bulb making popping sounds, or like a little ting. But I think that's just from really expanding, hopefully, and not a sign of it going wrong. Now it's really hard to tell how very bright this thing is. It is very insanely bright. Now I would like to do this with a mercury lamp. I don't think it would be as bright, but I think it would be a little bit more pleasing to look at, especially clear mercury. Now it's turning more of a white color that you would expect from metal halide. So far the fixture is still room temperature. So the bulb that I got from this I actually got from an antique store for $10. And as far as I can tell, it's only been, it's got uh, only a little bit of use on it. So it should, as far as I'm using it, should last practically forever, considering I don't turn this thing on very often. It's probably going to get, I don't know, a couple uses here and there. So I definitely think this will look better with Mercury Vapor Bulb. But Metal Halide is also a very nice option, especially for a parking lot. Okay, you can't even like look at that. That's so insanely bright. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and pan the camera around, and here's the wall behind it. Fixed that fixture's not on. This is the only light that's on right now, and it is so insanely bright. I love this thing. Here, if I do that, it'll kind of see. Just maybe can get an idea of just 
how absurdly bright this fixture is. So I'm going to say that's about fully warmed up, and we're going to turn it off so we can watch it glow. Also, it makes that smell, that smell that all street lights do because they get so incredibly hot. I'd have to actually look or ask someone that knows more about this to tell me exactly why that is. But I just know it's something to do with it getting incredibly hot. So let's go ahead and turn this off in three, two, one. That's insane. Oh, right, this is now... You can't tell in camera, but this... Now, just with this, uh... This light on, it feels so dim in here. So, yeah, I think that's a very impressive light. Now, did it get warm? No, it's barely above room temperature. So, I'd have to leave this on for quite a bit longer for it to warm up. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. I'm sure I did, but that's it for now, and again, thanks for watching, and as always, bye for now.